Hello, I am Dave, aka Ghostfeet, and welcome to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4. So this is the fourth game, obviously, in uh, Paradox Dev Studios Hearts of Iron series of World War, World War II focused grand strategy games. Uh, it's also the first Hearts of Iron game that I've ever played. And uh, this is a big, complicated beast of a strategy game, so the learning curve has been kind of steep. So as a little disclaimer here, I am very far from being an expert in this game, though I think I have a pretty decent handle on the basics at this point. Um, and as another disclaimer, while I'm disclaiming things, this is the uh, pre-release preview version, uh, though I guess technically not beta since we're on version 1.0. Uh, still though, there may be things that are different in the final release, there may be a few bugs. It's okay, I haven't really run into anything major. So let's go ahead and get started as the music ends. Um, we're going to be starting a new game in 36. You can also start in 1939 if you want to, but uh, 36 gives you more freedom because it's a lot longer before the war breaks out and you can uh, have much more control over the direction your nation takes. And I'm going to be playing as France, as you probably know from the title of this video. But we are not going to be playing uh, quite historically, probably. Uh, for one thing, we're going to be turning off historical AI focuses so that the other nations won't necessarily follow the courses that they followed in history. Though, in many cases, in my experience, they do seem to do that anyway. Um, but we'll also be taking a non-historical course for France, in that I will be trying to go communist. Which hopefully will be pretty interesting. Alright, so let's get started by dealing with our alerts at the top of the screen here. Uh, let's start by talking about factories. We have uh, free civilian factories, we have uh, a pretty small industrial base at the start of the game here, and our first course of action is probably going to be to build this up by building more factories. So, factories are built um, on a state level. In each of these states, you have a certain number of factories you can build from 10, 6, 4 in the various regions, and those slots are shared by these other types of buildings here, including military factories. But uh, factories are used to build all of your other building types, so it's very important to have a lot of them, and it's probably going to be a standard procedure, I think, for everybody at the start of the game to just spend a while building up their available civilian factories. So that's what I'm going to do at the start here. We're going to... Uh, let's see, maybe not build all the way up to the limits, because as I said, we're going to maybe want to build some other things in some of these states. But we definitely want to get plenty of these queued up. Uh, I guess that'll probably do for the moment. Um, yeah, we'll get those queued up. We'll then decide what else we're going to build once these are finished. Um, how this basically works is that 15 factories can be working on any single project at a time. So we have 15 working on building this factory in Ile de France, and then the remaining eight that we have available are going to be working on this one, which will therefore build slower, but we'll get through them all eventually. Um, I'll talk about some of these other things as they become relevant. Uh, for example, military factories are obviously very important for building military equipment. But uh, let's go through our other alerts. We have research slots available. So as France, we have three research slots. Other countries have four or uh, possibly fewer if you're a smaller country. And we can unlock more later, which is something we'll definitely want to do. In fact, before we talk about research, actually, let's go to the National Focus Alert and talk about this first, because I think this is a lot more important. This is the um, National Focus Tree, which is kind of like a talent tree, if you uh, are familiar with MMOs. But it sort of s sets the direction that we're going to go with our country. Um, so we have various separate things we can do. We have the uh, sort of industrial focus tree here that we can go down, which is probably something that we want to do early, because this has an extra research slot we can unlock, which I think is very important, and also we can get some free factories. And um, uh, military and civilian factories, and also extra infrastructure, which is pretty useful to have. We could also choose between a defensive and aggressive focus. This little icon means these are mutually exclusive, as you might expect. Uh, let's skip this big tree for a second. We also have the navy focus and air focus, which we can use to improve our navy and air force pretty clearly, but this government reform tree is perhaps the most interesting one, and we have a lot of different paths we can go down here. We can uh, choose to go down basically towards um, 
Let's see, we could go a fascist direction if we choose, for example, this branch here. Then we could maybe go down to France first, and that, that would let us uh, start our own faction as opposed to the Allies and the Axis. But what I'm going to do is go down the sort of communist direction, as I mentioned, and probably try to join the Comintern. We can also try to start our own communist faction as well, but uh, I think it would be silly to do that rather than, you know, take a very powerful ally in the Soviet Union. So uh, we'll probably be doing this, and we might just do this uh, first. Arguably, we should be going for the industrial expansion first, because the sooner you get that started, the sooner things... Uh, get developed there, but um, I think we'll go with government reform. So this first one will take 70 days to complete and it'll give us some political power, which we will probably use at that point to recruit a government advisor, which I will talk about when it becomes relevant, but you can see we started zero political power and we're getting plus 0.2 per day, so it'll take us a while to get that naturally, but the extra 120 will help us out. Okay, we'll look at research now. So there are a variety of different uh, tech trees that we can go down and we can research, as you saw, three different things at a time. So I think the most important things to focus on are the industry techs first. This will increase construction speed, which will help us, up with, help us with, out with building all the factories, as I was talking about. So we'll get that for one of our slots. Um, engineering, I think, is also going to be important which reduces research time. Obviously, the sooner you do that, the better, the faster then you can get through the whole tech tree. And we might choose one of the military-focused techs for our next one, or alternatively, we could just do the other industry tech here, which this increases our production efficiency cap, which I will explain once we get to the relevant screen. Um, on the other hand, we could go for in infantry tech. Uh, these ones, we can get new equipment. We can just get the, this one's at the top, which is uh, flat bonuses to our combat abilities, basically. Uh, that's maybe not going to be too important at the early game here, though. Maybe be able to hold off on that for a little bit. So we could just get the basic machine tools. Yeah, okay, we'll do this first. All right, we have free dockyards, uh, which will lead me to open the production screen here so I can talk about this. So we have only six military factories right now, and the way uh, production of equipment works is we assign these factories to production lines producing various things, in our case, infantry equipment, support equipment, etc. Um, and the production efficiency that I mentioned is uh, this bar here. So our current production efficiency cap is 50%, and basically this means that the longer you have factories dedicated to producing a certain amount of equipment, the more efficient they become. If we were to change this, the efficiency would drop dramatically and then slowly tick back up. So you really want to avoid changing your factories around as much as possible. But uh, six military factories is not very much, so we're not producing very much military equipment at the moment, especially not uh, tanks. We're only producing about one of those a week. Plus, we can see that we're reducing these at reduced speed because we don't have access to oil, which is something I will also talk about in the near future. So we do have one free naval dockyard. We see we have some ships queued up. We have seven of these, four of these. Uh, in these cases, they're just gonna keep constantly producing them and extras will be stockpiled. But for these ships, we have particular numbers queued up at the start of the game here, uh, which is fine. I think we'll just assign our one extra dockyard to this line. I don't think the dockyards have the same production efficiency thing as the military factories, but that's okay. Right, we have no divisions in basic training, so armies, of course, are important, so we probably want to get some divisions into training. And you can see we have various uh, types of divisions here. I think we'll get started by building some infantry divisions. Uh, we can choose where to deploy them. We'll just do them in or around the capital. And let's get started with maybe getting four of these, getting getting going simultaneously. So they'll have to get uh, their equipment, they'll have to get trained, and then they'll deploy to the map. We will be able to deploy them sooner if we want to, but usually it's better to wait till they have training and equipment, uh, probably. So we have various other types of divisions as well as basic infantry. We have um, alpine divisions, mountaineers, which get uh, combat bonuses in mountains, and I think we'll probably try to train some of these as well. 
we'll have them appear down here. And let's see, we have two different um, armor divisions. Let me have a look at the templates here. The division designer, I'll talk about a bit more in the future, but we can sort of see the composition of our divisions. So this has uh, four motorized infantry and two light tank brigades, I guess. Companies. I'm not sure about the technical terms. And this one is all light tanks. Okay. Well, let's get the... Division Légère Mécanique, and we'll train uh, about one of those at a time as well, and we'll just have you go up here. Okay, so we have Divisions Training. So while we're on the topic of armies, uh, let's actually define some armies. So these are sort of the organizational units that you mostly use to manage your uh, troops. Let's actually just... Deselect a few of these. We'll go down to 24 for a reason which I will explain momentarily. We'll assign these to an army, and once they're assigned to an army, we can give them a commander. And we have two types of commanders who are generals. They can handle up to 24 divisions. And field marshals who have no limit, but they get uh, different bonuses to generals. Uh, the generals ones are usually a little more um, impactful, I think which is why you'd want to keep generals around, even though they have a lower limit. So we'll just appoint a general here to this army. And we'll give this army some orders via the battle plans interface. So I won't get too deep into what this does right now until we get into a war, but for now I'll tell them to set up along a front line over here. We'll get a second army organized as well. Uh, you and you. Uh, 21. Let's actually make this a smaller one. Just 14, and we'll assign you to a new army as well. And we'll tell you to line up along the front with France. Okay, so they won't actually move until we unpause the game, which I probably won't be doing for a little while here, though hopefully I will unpause the game during this episode. At least that's the hope. Okay, so we've dealt with all our alerts apart from the insufficient resources, which... Um, it says that we need oil, which, as I mentioned, is slowing down the production of some of our ships and, I guess, our tanks as well, probably. Uh, if we look at our logistics tab, we can see... First of all, any equipment that we have in storage, which uh, is not too relevant right now, but also how much oil we have. We have uh, surpluses of the other resources that are important, so we don't need to worry about this. But the oil is a problem. If we go to our map modes here, we can find the resource map mode. So we can see that within our home territory we have aluminium, steel, and that's about it, I think. I guess this is a pretty good time to uh, maybe take... Um, oh, I think the music is now pretty loud. Let me just... Uh, drop music volume a little bit here. Might be a little bit better. Okay. Um, might be a good time to sort of take inventory of our holdings throughout the world as France. So, obviously we have our core territories. We have a big chunk of Africa as well. Algeria and parts south. We also have a little port over here near Ethiopia. Uh, we have some territory over here, which, uh, let me just take a look at the resources here. Uh, that's resistance. Yeah, we have no resources available there, but we do border Iraq, who do have oil available. So what I was kind of considering doing at the start of the game here is maybe declaring on Iraq. Now, we won't be able to do that as a democracy, so we'll be trying to flip our government to communist as soon as possible. But once we have done that, we'll be able to fabricate claims on Iraq and declare wars. And that will get us some access to oil early on, which could be very useful for us. Uh, so apart from that, we also have control of land over here in Southeast Asia, where we incidentally have a pretty large supply of rubber, which is also useful. Uh, that's about it as far as foreign holdings. Well, we have actually a little 
piece of land in France, we have islands down here. Oh, Madagascar, of course, which uh, may or may not ever be relevant to anything. Um, all right, and of course, in South America, we have French Guiana, and I think some of the Caribbean islands. But uh, again, they may never be relevant to anything in particular. Unless maybe we end up doing some kind of amphibious invasion of the USA or something like that. It could happen. Okay. So our armies, well, we have a couple of armies assigned at least. Um, we probably will want to create some more armies. We have colonial troops down here in Africa. I am lining these guys up on the fronts with uh, Germany and Italy, by the way, right now, even though I don't really expect them to have to do anything for quite some time. Or at least we will maybe hope that they don't. Uh, let, let's see, there's the troops in the north here we'll assign to an army. And put a commander in charge. And we'll actually assign them to a new theater. Which I will name. The African Theater. Uh, this doesn't have any gameplay effect really, it's just for organizational reasons. And I guess we'll get them to line up along the Italian border here. Alright, that seems fine for the moment. Um, what else to talk about? So I'll mention a few of the other screens here. Uh, diplomacy. Naturally, we can conduct diplomacy with other nations, we can get um, military access, we can uh, boost party popularity in other nations, which is something we might want to do at some point. If we're going communist, we would like to have other communist countries around us, but it's quite difficult to change other company or uh, not companies, um, other countries' politics like that. Um, there is an exception to that, though, namely Spain, uh, which will have a civil war probably this year, probably quite soon, and in that civil war we will probably try to support the communist side, because it would be nice to have a communist ally to the south of us here, or at the very least uh, a country that does not join the Axis, as fascist Spain would tend to do. So uh, that will be something that we'll take care of, hopefully, or at least try to. Uh, we've looked at constructions, we looked at production a bit, uh, we've done recruit and deploy, we have looked at logistics. Okay, I think we can maybe actually unpause the game. We have a lot of stuff to... We haven't actually looked at, like, the strategic air map modes and the navy map modes, but that's okay. We have our ships in port and we have some planes, which I will speak about as they become relevant, but we don't really need to do anything with these right now while we're not at war. Um, Yeah, okay. We have our focus on government reform, which we're going to use to try to become a communist. I think we'll unpause. I hope there's nothing uh, incredibly important I've forgotten. Let's go up to a higher speed here. Maybe speed 4. Since not too much will probably be happening at the start of the game here, we'll see our armies get into the positions that I've told them to get into lining up along the front. So the oil issue, by the way, um, offensive wars aren't the only way to get access to oil. We will later on be able to research, or in fact we could do it right now, we could research synthetic oil ex experiments which would allow us to build synthetic refineries in our states. But they take up factory slots, which we'd like to use for factories, of course, and also it takes research time to do those, which we could be using to research other things, so if we can avoid researching that and gain our oil by military means. That would be beneficial to our industry. So let's uh, organize our remaining troops here into another army in the French theater. And we may as well line them up on the border with Spain. even though hopefully we will not be fighting Spain at any point. Uh, let's see. Over here we only have one division. 
So if we're going to go to war with Iraq at some point, we'll probably want to transport troops over or train more. In fact, why don't we set up recruitment for a colonial brigade? And rather than just having these produced constantly, which is what I'm doing with these other brigades I queued up, we'll just make four of these, how about? We'll have them deploy over here. I think I just clicked on the airbase icon there instead of actually telling them where to deploy. Was I still clicking on the wrong place? Oh, we can't deploy them overseas, I see. Would you, you think the red uh, stripes fill there would have uh, given me a clue? Alright, in this case, we'll just have them deploy down in Provence. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll also see what troops we have over here. Not too many. We may as well organize them into an army as well. And we are probably most likely to need these up in the north. I'll just have you set up along this border. No need to assign a commander there yet, I think. So we can see by these icons on the map here that Italy is at war. They start at war with Ethiopia, which they shouldn't have too much trouble winning. But we have no intel on the combat, so we don't really know what's going on there. Spoiler alert, Italy is winning. Alright, so uh, national focuses always take 70 days. So we won't have too long to wait before we get our first one here. And we'll be a little short still of the 150 political power that it'll take to add a political advisor. But we can have a look at what we have available here. And I'll probably go for the communist revolutionary. So that we can get our communist supports increasing as quickly as possible. And at some point we'll get a referendum where we can install a co communist government without elections, or at least such has been my experience while testing this. So hopefully that will happen again. If not, I think one of the things that we can get in the focus tree will uh, force us to have a communist government. Maybe not, actually. This will increase communism support. And it has to happen like that. Alright, so we finished government reform. We're up to 134 political power. We can choose our next national focus. So if we're going the communist direction, we have to revise Versailles, which will give us uh, extra research bonus for land doctrine. Now, let me look at, at my uh, national spirit here. These are various modifiers to our country. We have Victors of the Great War, which gives us lower recruitable population, which affects our manpower. And we have a huge increase to Land Doctrine research time. Now, Land Doctrine is in the tech tree. It's basically we can choose a specialization for our land forces. We've started with one in Grand Battle Plan Doctrine, which we'll probably go for. This makes our planning better. Planning is something I'll talk about once we get into a war. But um, the bonus to Land Doctrine is... Maybe going to be useful later, but not while we have that plus 75% modifier. However, we have to get this before we can go to support the left, so I think we'll go for this now. So that we can get to one of the uh, communist support increasing focuses there. So the Spanish Civil War, uh, in my experience, usually kicks off pretty soon after the start of the game. I think historically it was around the middle of 1936, June or July or something. But I've had it start almost immediately. 
when starting a game. So I guess it's fairly flexible. And once it starts, we'll be able to send volunteers to support uh, nationalist, not, not nationalist Spain, uh, Republican Spain. We better not accidentally support the wrong side, that would be terrible. But the number of brigades that you can send as volunteers is limited by the number uh, of divisions, number of divisions, not brigades, you can send is limited by the number of divisions you have. So if we can get some trained before that happens and maybe increase the number we can send, that would be great. Though we are apparently not making much progress here. This is, I'm assuming, because our production is pretty low. Yeah, we have a total need of 25,000 infantry equipment and we're only producing with two factories right now, so it's going to take us a while to fill this need and get troops deployed. Okay, we have Electronic Mechanical Engineering, which gives us a bonus to research time. And it gives us access to Radio, which improves reinforce rate, or Mechanical Computing, which is a further bonus to research time, so I think we fairly obviously go for that first. So that we can start cranking through the technologies as quickly as possible. Uh, incidentally, by the way, we will not be able to send volunteers to support the right side in the Spanish Civil War while we are still a democratic government. Uh, where does it say here? Send volunteers tension limit is plus 50%. So that refers to the global uh, tension here, which is currently at 0%, but it's raised by things like um, you know, people justifying war goals and various events as we start... Uh, approaching the outbreak of the the real war. But get, democratic governments are very limited in what they can do while tension is low. Uh, so we could start trying to improve relations with people, but I do want to avoid spending any political power on that before we get the communist guy hired but we'll start doing it as soon as that happens. And I guess, um, well, here we go. Public demands rearmament, rearmament, rearmament. Uh, the ongoing war approaching our borders has loomed over the upcoming election, with many voters being concerned that France is not prepared for being thrown into the conflict or whatever may arise from it. They demand we increase our precautions and ensure that our nation is ready for war, while the majority still supports party radical. We may lose them to more radical elements if we don't alleviate their apprehensions. So we can change the law to early mobilization. So we're currently on a civilian economy. So this affects our construction speed and how many of our factories are dedicated to consumer goods. Which is currently 13, so we'd get more dedicated to building our additional factories. So let's see, we can go to early mobilization or we can lower national unity. All right, we get a free uh, government change then, I guess, which actually is very positive, I think. And we definitely don't want to lower our national unity, which is pretty low for us already. Basically, this affects um, how soon we'll capitulate in a war. Lower is worse. All right, workers threaten with strikes. Following the sacking of two workers at a large factory, struggles between workers and factory owners have erupted across the country. Workers backed by Parti Communiste Francais have organized and are demanding better conditions such as higher wages and shorter work. Um, so basically we can either gain factory strikes, which lowers national unity and factory output for 90 days, or we can get Matignon agreements, which lowers factory output for 365 days by less, but also gives us extra popularity for the Communist Party, which actually is what we want, so we'll of course take this. We're up to 37% support for the Communist Party. 
you'll see that modifier goes here in our national spirit. Uh, the other things here we have, by the way, are disjointed government, which lowers national unity and our um, political power. And we're also protected by the Maginot Line, a line of forts along the German border, which increases our max planning, but makes planning slower. And again, I'll talk about planning when it's relevant. Okay, here we go with the Spanish Civil War. A civil war has erupted in Spain. Several generals seeking to overthrow the current government in Madrid have issued a, pron an, a pronunciamento, and a large portion of the Spanish armed forces have answered their call to arms. Okay, what will this mean for Spain? Well, more importantly, what will this mean for France? Because we currently cannot send volunteers to Republican Spain. Your country is not allowed to send volunteer forces until world tension is at 50%, but hopefully we'll be able to change our government very soon and send them some volunteers. Alternatively, I think one of the national focuses here, Republican intervention, will allow us to send volunteers even if we're in a democratic government. It sets the rule, can send volunteers, volunteer forces. So that's going to take some time to get to anyway. So I guess we just hope that we get our government flip in the near future in time to help them out. There's our national focus. And we have the remilitarize... Uh, I can't read words today. Remilitarization of the Rhineland. Several German divisions recently advanced into the Rhineland. So uh, you may have seen the little flashing red border on the map in the Rhineland, which was a demilitarized zone. So one of Germany's focuses is to remilitarize the Rhineland, which is a clear violation of the Versailles Treaty under which Germany is forbidden from militarizing that reason. Unless, unless we issue an ultimatum demanding their withdrawal, the treaty will not be enforced. So we can say it's an act of war and rally the British to our side. We'll lose political power. We'll lose national unity. And we'll join the allies. So we don't want to do this. We're going to become communist and join the Comintern. So I guess we basically have to issue a diplomatic objection. United Kingdom gets an event and we, and the United Kingdom, I guess, gains a lower opinion of the German Reich. Well, somebody does. Germany has stationed troops in the Rhineland. The local population cheered the German soldiers on, while the diplomatic reactions from France and Britain have so far been muted. It is no more than the Germans walking into their own backyard, a political, a political commentator in Britain observed. We must indeed see to our own defences. We have basic machine tools, so we need to choose new research. Uh, so this unlocks two different industry trees here. We can either go for concentrated industry or, or dispersed in this industry. So this basically concentrated industry is slightly more vulnerable to bombing, but it also gives you slightly higher factory output. I think I'll go with uh, concentrated industry and just plan to not get bombed, <laughs> um, hopefully, by maintaining air superiority in my home territories. That's the plan anyway. We also got our national focus to um, revise Versailles, so that gives us a bonus to land doctrine, which we can just store up and use later. We don't have to make use of that right now. And we'll support the left, which will help out communism support. And I'm just going to wait until we get to 150 here, which should happen very soon, and then hire an advisor. Trying to keep an eye on the borders in Spain because we don't really have any view of the combat to see how that's going. All right, and I think we'll go for the political advisor. Alternatively, it's maybe good. Oh, I did say I was going to get a communist revolutionary. We actually can't get one until we have the relevant national focus. Ah, I see. Well, I think this is okay. Instead, we'll just get a captain of industry will speed up our factory construction speed, which is also useful, and arguably a higher priority anyway. Alright, that's fine. 
All right, so hopefully we can finish our focus and start getting more support for the Communist Party and change our government pretty soon. In time to make a difference in Spain. It seems like Nationalist Spain is slightly winning. They're definitely taking this territory up here. We'll see how it goes, though. I think that's going to do it, though, for this uh, first episode. Since it is the first episode of the series, uh, I'd especially appreciate if you click the like button. It really helps out with search ratings and discovery and stuff on YouTube. And, of course, thanks for watching, and join me again next time.